Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come. If you got mulch, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> We love our listeners, but if you like mulch... Get the fuck out of here. Love my wife. Love my wife. I love my wife. Oh. <sighs> We're live. Sounds like victory. <laughs> Welcome back, boys. We're not actually live. We're just... We're live in the flesh. We're alive. We are alive. Today we're joined by one of uh, Fall Creek's local legends. Finest. Fall Creek's finest. Uh, owner of Rock and Say, part, part owner, co-owner... Yeah, co, co-owner of Rock and Tate, um, football coach at a local high school. Um, the guy has many names. We're joined by here, George Tate. Welcome. Thank you. Oh wait, hold on. Oh, you gotta you're turn muted. his mic on. One more time. Hey, here we go. There he is. Here yeah, we go. Here. <laughs> Welcome, We're figuring George. Figuring it out. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me. This is cool. I like uh, like diving into reasons why we do what we do mm -hmm. yeah sure. have you ever heard yourself talking in your head like this twice no several different times yeah you done radio or anything like that i have a few different uh like live on the spots uh i did a podcast at growler guys that was kind oh of fun. nice Ooh. that was fun we might need to similar to this it we, was kind of cool like we might need to look into that it was cool yeah what was that about you were just like walking by and they're like hey can get over here you know it was like a co-op like hey let's talk about what makes you tick and what goes around you get the the shameless plugs in there like hey if you need any work let's call rock and tate right <laughs> yeah and you're like hey that beer is delicious which one is it and it's you know yeah <laughs> speaking of beers yeah what are we drinking what's everyone drinking i am drinking a sierra nevada hazy little thing ipa mm. Mm, quick trips finest thing. delicioso sounds terrible <laughs> that sounds like shit <laughs> Justin, I, do we even need to ask? As viewers I mean, could guess, Justin. <laughs> yeah, I'm going with the uh, old reliable here. Triple hops brewed. Miller. Miller Light. Miller. A fine pilsner. It's so fine. I'm drinking uh, Viva Viva Hop Vegas. I don't know. This was just, it's dented. You can feel it like it's been in the fridge for like maybe three or four months. So time to be drunk. Hazy IPA. George, what about you? What are you drinking on? What are you, you sipping on over there? are so much more raw dogs than I thought you were. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Kirkland's Finest right there. Kirkland's Finest. Signature Tennessee sour mash whiskey with a splash of Diet Coke. Love, Love Kirkland's. They make golf clubs, too. You know, like, I heard they're making a driver. Oh, Really? I know they make wedges. I've I seen have, those. I have a Kirkland golf uh, glove, which I used this week. Do you? Yep. Is it good? Oh, yeah. Does the glove fit? If the glove fit, you must have quit. No, premium doesn't leather fit. doesn't fit premium leather <laughs> premium yeah. leather wow. premium leather kirkland yep. does things right I like their golf balls are good too i think they're pro v ones would you go with kirkland's over costco or shopco wait is that a brand kirkland? don't they have stores Kir no it's it's from costco oh shopco doesn't Sorry. exist costco or it's uh, smooth guys what's the other one it's smooth <laughs> it's smooth <laughs> love it what's the other what's the other one um, members mark no. Ma no yeah the sam's club one members yeah. mark yeah 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 that's trash. Oh, yeah. We don't we don't mess with that. Costco, if you're looking for a sponsor, <laughs> place to land. You're opening up a store here uh, soon. You should maybe think about sponsoring. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to get that name out there. That's right. We got a couple new followers on Instagram. Appreciate you guys. Hey, can you turn the TV here. on? I can't see what uh, you're looking at. Oh, yeah. I should probably do that, huh? We were really prepared for this. Yeah, see, I always feel like I'm prepared, and then there's like five things that aren't done. Are you recording on that thing? Yeah. Because you didn't last yes. time. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Um, Shuli, Eric Shuli from uh, Shuli Companies. Thanks for following, bud. Yeah, that's my uh, coworker. Oh, Shout hey out. there, Shuli. What's up, Eric? And, uh, it's actually Schooly. 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 What are we up to, like 90? 102. 102. 102. Hey, we're creeping. Baby steps. That's awesome. <laughs> I feel like I sent a lot of good memes on Instagram to the Raw Dog account this week. Yeah, we'll get into them. <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> Every time I looked at my phone, it was like, from Justin, from Justin, yeah. from Justin. Someone, <laughs> someone was bored at work this week. 
Mm. Um, so, George, from Fall Creek, uh, did oh. you play high school sports or anything? I did. Sports uh, Sports were the, like, that's what I thought every kid was doing. Yeah, I'm going to take a guess at track. Up through eighth grade. I wish I would have kept trying. <laughs> But I knew you were a monster <laughs> in high school. I was a baseball guy, actually. My my mom uh, was an occupational therapist, and she thought football was bad, and you would get concussions and stuff. And so I played a lot of baseball, travel ball, all that kind of stuff. Wait, you didn't play football? I did, but later, you know, it was all the way up through. But it was like football, such a I, you know, football is probably my favorite sport. Yep, mm-hmm. and I discovered that as I got older. But it's such a short sport. Right, mm-hmm. you get to August camp and you, you get going within a few weeks. Season starts. You get September, October, and yeah, you know, we, you know, I came in right after the Schultz area. I don't know if you guys remember Ron Schultz. Yep, that's mm-hmm. uh, so my business partner, Kane Rocco. Um, I was a little seventh grader when he was up there, but they won state two years in a row. Mm-hmm. And then as I was getting to high school, like he had enough. Like you know, I think there was some health things going on and stuff. Yeah, who was so, who was the baseball coach at Fall Creek? Wasn't he there forever? Um. I oh think. my gosh! Didn't they have a long time coach? That, I don't know. When, so, when we played, I feel like they had a coach that was pretty good. I don't know. What baseball? Yeah, I could be mistaking that for Osseo. First, did they have a coach? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there was a coach. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh my right. gosh! There was. I hope he's not listening. He's probably hating <laughs> me right now. Um. I'm going to think. Oh, Storley. Oh, my gosh. Storley. Storley. Yeah. He was the best. Oh, yeah, my gosh. Of course. Yeah. Didn't he coach yeah. basketball, too? He did. Yeah. He did. Yep. And he had a brother. Yep. Twin brother, Blair Taylor. Yes. That's where they're And from. they were, like, yes. coach forever. Yeah. Yes. Shout out to the Storley boys. Good? Yeah. Yeah. Were you guys good? We were. We went to state my sophomore year. Baseball? Yep. Nice. Did you guys win? We did not. We yeah. lost to Wisconsin Heights, which was a repeat of the story, I think, from, I think, the lead, the previous legend team there was, like, 89 or Where is something. Wis- so where they is made Wisconsin it to the Final Heights? Four and then we lost. Where is Wisconsin Heights? I don't know. But they were good. They Probably had, from they like had a Milwaukee D1, or something. They had a D one recruit pitcher, and we we're all like, "What is that?" <laughs> Here comes the this guy's 85. throwing eighty five. We have seen oh, yeah. nothing over seventy two all year. Oh yeah, he was bringing the heat. <laughs> yeah, there was a guy. I am um, proud to say, I popped it up one time. Hey, <laughs> contact. I saw it. I think there was a guy in our age group, Scott Fern. Remember him? Yeah. I know that Scott. dude could throw missiles, and in like Babe Ruth, that guy was throwing like mid seven. Yeah, he was the reason why I quit baseball. Actually, yeah. Yeah, he was scary. <laughs> Thank I, you, Scott. <laughs> he matured as like a five year old. Like he was. I never six, went to Babe Ruth because of him, because he was just crazy. Like yeah. he could throw the heat, but it wasn't very accurate back in the day. And yeah. I was like, no, I'm no. What but, year did you graduate? Two thousand and seven. Okay. He graduated 2006, and then he actually went on to play. He played college, I think. For, Should yeah, have yeah. U of M. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was scary. He was mm-hmm. scary to play to hit against. He was a heck yeah. of a guy, though. Yeah, you couldn't dodge that ball fast <laughs> enough. <laughs> if it was coming in high, you were done. Right. <laughs> Lights out. Um. Yeah. So okay. So in high school, played sports. And then you got into construction. Yeah. So the story of where and how that happened is I was 12 years old. We moved to Fall Creek. My parents found a, a gem of a home four miles outside of Fall Creek, mm-hmm. 17,000 bucks for this old farmhouse on Whoa. five <laughs> acres. <laughs> what? It's like giving it away. My dad saw an opportunity. Was it a We tent? all believed in him. <laughs> old story in a half house. It needed everything, right? Mm-hmm. Failing septic. I don't think the well worked. All this kind of stuff. And they looked at like, you know, this could be our chance. And, you know, I was like, sure, what do we got to do, Dad, right? Yeah. So that's where it kind of all started. But that's awesome. every summer or whatever, it was just, hey, we're going to pull this apart and do this, right? And yeah. I just remember that all the way up through. But as I became a teenager. How old were you when you moved in? Uh, 12 years old. 12, okay. Yeah. So it was like that. middle of fifth grade when I transferred uh, to Fall Creek. Okay. It was great. We had some space. We found an old three-wheeler, you know, that <laughs> oh, obviously shit. would flip over if you didn't, t- you know, yeah. take a wide turn. And we got really good about tipping it back up. Yeah. Nobody ever got hurt, <laughs> at it, you know. But, no, we had space, and it was it was a lot of fun. I guess as a kid, you don't really realize what you don't have, like, when people care about you and you're, yeah. you're doing your thing. But I look back now, like – man, we should have just bulldozed that house, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I got, as I got older, like I knew so much about 
what's inside of a wall and what do you got to do to make that wall straight right because there were some things in that old crooked house mm -hmm. that <laughs> my dad would say like he let me fail but i just feel like he's like yeah that's good enough let's just <laughs> get some things back together because it's a lot of work yeah yeah you know and to do things right to level things and um but no it was that was that was a starting point but then the dream i think that I was carrying up through where people ask me like, cause as a teenager, like, Hey, what are you going to do when you get older? I'm like, um, <laughs> I set myself on, I'm going to play professional baseball and I'm going to be an auto mechanic. Cause yeah. once I started driving, I had this old car and like started learning about how to fix it. And mm -hmm. it was exciting. A couple of buddies that like their dads, like had these old like muscle cars, rebuilding fun stuff. I'm like, what'd you drive? That looks cool. I had a Buick century. I think it was a, this is your first car that you were fixing 89 up? 89 or 85. Yeah. Buke Century. I'm looking it up. Yeah, those things are pretty. They can get up and go, too. Oh, yeah. Once I got the air conditioning thing out of there and I bypassed that, <laughs> I think I got at least 10 more horsepower. What color, what color was it? <laughs> well, you know, it was silver to begin with, but then I, I did a bunch of work on it. I think I painted it blue, metallic blue, with white racing stripes down oh, the hood. Oh, baby. Dang. Did it look anything like this? Very close to that. <laughs> you know, actually, the bottom middle picture was the car. Just imagine that with blue like electric racing. blue with like a white, two white stripes going up the hood. For sure. Flaming hot white <laughs> flames on the side. Right? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so I don't know. And then uh, um, high school kind of transpired, you know, expired and like, hey, let's get to work. And uh, my. Uh, at that point, um, my girlfriend's brother, Kane Rocco, he had a job roofing in Eau Claire, and he's like, hey, you want to come make some money and work hard? I'm like, sure, whatever, right? So I show up, and I'm like thinking I'm making banks. My first job was Fazoli's, right? Heck oh, yeah. Making Shout $5.15 out. <laughs> an hour. Oh, yes. Oh, Get yeah, those breadsticks, baby. <laughs> well, and that's back when, like, if you had dining room duty, like your job was literally to make sure tables are clean, every the condiments are stocked, and you're in bread sex. I think the rule is every five minutes. Really? And they don't do that anymore. I'm like, it's because I'm not there anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had this one guy I way legit, back in the day. <laughs> I don't think I've been to Fazoli since grade school. I don't yeah. know. It's still open. Yeah, I haven't either. It yeah. is. I yeah. think I've gone once since high school. We hey, were if you ever got a spaghetti feed, like you just call oh, ahead yeah. and it's, it's just so easy to feed a bunch of people fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm curious. Like how, a little cater order. Like it's, it's is there still that. unlimited bottomless uh, spaghetti bowls or pasta bowls? I do not think so. You mean breadsticks? No. The pasta. breadsticks, yes. Is it just breadsticks? I don't think we ever had. No? I swear I went there one time and spent like 10 bucks and ate like four, four bowls of chicken alfredo or like alfredo noodles. It wasn't me giving you the free food, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. But no, so my first job roofing was $7.50 an hour. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. A right? huge jump. I'm Big right. time yeah. and baby. Big yep. time. Yeah. I'm going to buy yep. a second Buick here real <laughs> quick. <laughs> yeah, so I just I did that, and I was getting ready to go to the tech college and uh, just working hard. My, I had another job changing oil on, for Megalube. You know, if you guys know where uh, Perkins is, so yep. Hastings there, yep. right? Mm -hmm. It used to be where that strip mall, or not mall, but like, Excuse me, like Papa John's and uh, where it is Air now. Accurate Auto. Yeah, there's back this in the day. old mobile station there. Yep. Yeah, and we changed oil. Like it was cool. It was a neat job. You got free cappuccino. I was like, I'm in. Let's Sweet. do this. <laughs> yes. So, but yeah, just worked our butts off that summer. Saved money. I was able to pay for, pay for um, uh, toolbox, and got into auto mechanics. And at the end of that semester, I was like, I'm not really sure I want to do cars. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I was like. I'm not really sure, you know, and I was thinking like, well, so I went back to school for structural engineering the following year and then completed the second year of, of roofing. And at that point, really starting to understand all of it, right? Realizing mm -hmm. like, okay, like if I need to get, if I want to get paid more money or lead a team or do something more here, I need to really understand all of it. And I was on a small team of just three guys and I was, you know, I was their bitch, right? I was like, doing yeah. all the stuff from that up. <laughs> but i realized hey that, bring these shingles up <laughs> right well how? i didn't get how to, do i do that i didn't get to touch a tool unless they had everything they needed so it taught me how to be urgent how to be proactive and think about all these jobs as we got there because if they had everything they needed up there guess what i got to grab a gun and like let's go yeah right so it, t it taught me 
kind of the whole system stuff. But then after that, it was, it was an interesting, like you think about like everything happens for a reason. After that second season, um, God, I love my breath, my boss, uh, Brian Steinman. So it was Royce Roofing. He, he bought it from the original owner. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you know, I'm sick of these headaches. I'm getting out of this. I'm done. And he'd rather be a truck driver and maybe finish some drywall in the winter times. And that after that next winter, I still had that, like, coming to Jesus moment. I'm like, what do we do? Like, I don't really want to do structural engineering. I learned that, you know, no offense to engineering, Josh, but I'm like, <laughs> I don't think I could be at a desk all day. Like, I think I want to be out and about. Yeah. And... Um, that was 2002 and we started rock and tape roofing in January. <laughs> started. I don't just... know why you would do that. Right. In the middle <laughs> of January. Let's do this. Yeah. Got to um, get all those quotes out. For right. Summertime. <laughs> well, and what kind of fuel it actually, so Kane had a buddy up in, uh, I think it was Blaine, Minnesota. They got blasted by hail and the buddy's like, Hey man, you should come up here and do some roofs. And we were just chatting a little bit about, you know, some money that he was making, getting mm-hmm. these roofs done and i was like dude maybe this is where we should go yeah you know so you you so, pray for hail you're like yep not anymore <laughs> not anymore <laughs> <laughs> although actually i'm 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 trying to learn so we're we're retail so in in the construction world like you're either a stormer or you're retail okay we don't like when it storms we don't like to go door knocking and chase it yep um but i'm just learning that there is you can be a help there. You just have to follow all of the, the process and systems so that way the insurance companies and homeowners have a good experience. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's like we don't have the same estimating software as insurance companies, so it gets to be like, well, this isn't the same thing. And, you know, really at the end of the day, like if, it, say, if your house gets bombed by hail and like, hey, this is what it costs us to do it, like they should pay that, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you press hard enough at the end, it's just kind of like we get – blacklisted in their system like don't call rock and tape <laughs> yeah you know yeah. but if you have their system like they're gonna pay that same amount anyways but then they, they feel more comfortable because you're using the same language yeah on yep. paper right yeah so actually i spent a lot of this weekend talking to a buddy um over in rochester that's all they do is storming he's like hey will you please come teach me retail right <laughs> so we're, it's been neat to like network with people that yep. normally we would be like I'm not telling you anything. Competitors, man. right? Like, you know, competitor, yeah. right? <laughs> and realizing the older I get, like, um, like you have to have this attitude of we or of abundance that, yep. like, one plus one equals three. Like, yeah, you know. And he's excited to help me, and he's like, I'm excited to help him. And mm-hmm. now it's just kind of how do you find time? And like, it's great for everybody. But if he moved down to Eau Claire with his company. Get right. out of here. See you later, man. <laughs> We're not friends anymore. Stay in Rochester. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, we're good so, until you come here. Do you have yeah. like do you have a a favorite project that you've done? Like just a home run like every a time. Like a home like that just you it was shit, shoot, whatever. Crap. It was crap <laughs> and then you just totally fixed it up and like do you have like your yes. Taj Mahal that you like You know, I you know, I think Maybe a way, a way to reframe that question is, like, what's the most rewarding project? Yeah, there too, you go. There maybe, you go. Yep. Right? There you go. For me, it's it's the ones where people don't understand what's happening mm-hmm. with their home, and they think it's one thing, and everybody's been telling them it's that thing, and then you spend a little bit extra time yep. to really figure it out and realize that it's a multidimensional situation. Mm-hmm. And perfect example, right? Um, you have a leak in your ceiling, and it's March. Oh, I had that guy redo that flashing on that chimney 10 times. It's leaking again. It's calm. Like guys have literally gone out of business, like chasing this kind of thing. But we look at like building science and a whole house approach and all these things that Mm -hmm. if you want your house to be 70 and it's negative 20 outside and you have hot air that wants to go to a cold surface, right? Just the physics of that and you add humidity to that. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, like, like I've been in so many attics where it's just like, it's pretty, right? Like it's just like this. (laughs) like frosted shiny it's beautiful <laughs> right and then the springtime comes and it all like starts to melt and then comes in and they're like it's a roofing problem right and it's not it's yeah. it's heat loss it's air loss it's it's condensations lack of ventilation it's all these things mm-hmm. and you know i've we've seen situations where it was simple as they had like the 100 gallon fish tank in the kids room and then they have the babies that have like 
10 baths a day, all yep. these humidity sources. They got the teenager that takes hour showers mm -hmm. and what the exhaust, doing in there? right. Or an exhaust <laughs> fan, not connected. Right. And you know, it just, it's crazy that how we can get to like, okay, here's what's going on, but it's also related to how you're living. Yep. And like, it's not just roofing. It's not just insulation. It's, you know, humidity control. I mean, we've seen humidifiers on HVAC systems and we're like the fifth phone call. I'm like, yeah, nobody can figure it out. We have this guy back, this guy back, this guy back. And you're like, your duct work is literally raining back into your house in the wintertime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we spent like five grand or 10 grand on this humidifier system with so-and-so. I'm like, I'm sorry to tell you, but you need to turn that off. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 We love how it feels. I'm like, you can't. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, but no, it's it's been cool like to have like third party back up there so it's not yeah. me coming in your house and saying man this is bad so we do a lot of like third party blower door testing that gives like an infrared test like it physically can measure how often your house exchanges air in an hour mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you can tell if your house is tight That's or cool. it's loose or like yeah. after we do it like and say hey man we got like a like our best like air reduction ever was 92 percent from a pre-test to a post-test jeez <laughs> like there was literally no insulation barrier for sure in this attic and we did all this work. It was, it was insane. Like that, that one was pretty cool, you know, but if you get it down, I think we got it down to like a three, three air changes an hour, which is pretty tight. Now humidity is going to be the next thing, right? So if it's a humid home, you'll see ice building up at the bottom of windows is the first sign. Like you better get rid of that. Yeah. Cause if you got any problems in your ceiling or attic or somewhere, say a can light, it could be zipping through there condensate mm -hmm. on your roof deck and boom there's that weird water spot in the springtime that you're gonna call a roofer to come out yeah, yeah you need a new roof right yeah you re-roof <laughs> it and boom there's a spot and then that guy comes back 10 times and george's old game you know. here it is <laughs> this is how we got the start oh yeah it's a roof it's a roof <laughs> someone's like this is the fifth time you've came back in four years let's uh let's look some right. so that's cool was there when you started um you and kane was it just you and kane doing small smaller roofing jobs or like replacing shingles and whatnot yeah it was just straight up roofing man was there uh was there uh the first big job where you you both were like holy shit we got it we got that one was there was there something major like a turning point where you're like this can't just be two guys in a <laughs> truck anymore this is uh we got to pull some some extra guys in you know we we were nervous so let's say let's just back up so our first year we'd have a project say it was a, a you know i guess we would do any roof right mm -hmm. so say it's one downtown third ward like just a monster old, old ass house yes like, me and yep. him and a guy like we'd find someone that needed some work and they'd help us and we would do it right but the house would take us like two weeks mm -hmm. <clears throat> but then we would have nothing to do or no phone calls for maybe it's a week or two weeks or three weeks and we'd look at each other like maybe it's time we gotta go get jobs Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden something would come in. And that was the coolest part about that first year, which I, again, I'll plug like Brian Simons, man, you're the man. Like he was, he was, they didn't want to deal with that Royce roofing anymore. And I think he gave us like five solid referrals oh, that nice. first year. And then we didn't know anything about business. So we missed the phone book. So we weren't like, well, how do we get our phone ring? What do we do? <laughs> but we were forced to start correctly. Like he, Kane had a Ford Ranger, we had a five by 10 trailer and I had a Honda Prelude. <laughs> Yep. Like, and it was very simple, but we just, we built, right. We just, we did the best we could. Yeah. Second year we traded with clear channel radio. We did a little radio tower thing in exchange for some radio. And we realized to get into the phone book, you have to talk to those guys in the summertime to get yeah. into the August, <laughs> September thing, which now hardly anybody uses the phone book. It's right. crazy. Do they make them still? They do. It's very I have thin. A, it's I very thin. One. When it, for, we first started, that thing was, Oh, yeah. Probably two inches thick. Yeah, you'd have strong right? men on TV ripping them in half. And you're talking like the full page. I'm mean, sure that's more than that now, but it was like, you know, $800 a month or 1000 bucks a month. And then yeah. the, the phone book folks talked to send a leader ad is kind of like, I think it's like a half page or dollar bill size, mm -hmm. but you're the first one. <laughs> you look up roofing, boom, you're the first yep. one. And they, you know, it was worth it. Yeah. We're like, yes, let's do that. And then the calls start coming in. Yeah. I mean, that was just like, you know, I had some notes here, but like our first year, like it just volume of business. I think we did like a hundred thousand our first year. I think we each made like 10 grand. Yeah. Like it was, 
I think our rent was a hundred bucks a month. Like it was survival mode back then. Yeah. And, yep. And I mean, we paid ourselves less than what people make right now to work at like fast food restaurants for, for sure. For the first couple of years. Yep. Yeah. You know, when I think back of like, and that's what it takes though. I think, yeah, you got to yeah. grind it, man. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta be serious. Reinvest. Yeah. Yep. And that's what it was too. We're like, Oh, if we're going to do that next big job, we probably should have that plank. Yep. And not be standing on a two by four, <laughs> yeah. you know, like that kind of stuff. So no, and like every year we doubled up until about 2006, I think. And then we finally built, um, we built houses, I think 2005 and 2006. And then we built our shop in 07. And that was, that was when we were putting the big boy pants on. Cause that was like, at that point we were just still alternating phone calls, uh, to our own phones. And then to, to bite the bullet to actually hire Get someone a to help line. answer the phone. <laughs> we did have a business line yeah. and sells, but we'd have it transferred oh, sure. forward, forward to our yeah. phones, right? Our sells. Yep. And so when you'd call us, you just think that we're just sitting in a building and we were yeah. 100% mobile, right? Yep. And so how many years you know, was it that you didn't have a shop? Five. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And it was just one of those, like, you know, you get feedback, right? People mm-hmm. are like, oh, it's just really nice if we can come in and pay our bill or if we could uh, <laughs> see some shingles on a wall display and not send them to a distributor. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think the biggest pl- complaint was our trucks and trailers. Cause at that point I think, you know, there was maybe three or four trucks and trailers and stuff running around. Like the guys would take them home and they'd be clogging the neighbor's driveway. <laughs> yeah. And people were like tired of our stuff being parked on streets, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So, but how many employees do you have now? I want to say we're just over 30. That's crazy. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. All together with, with the field technicians and the office sport and sales pros for sure. Yeah. So, and we just like, we were very close because people are like, man, you guys like blew up and got big. Like I felt like we were very, very careful, mm-hmm. you know? We just started with a couple and then it was kind of every year kind of built a little yep. bit. Yep. And then the years that we did think we could do more like 2010, we almost went on a business cause we had like three roofing crews. I think we did three and a half million that year and we got to Christmas time and we we're like broke. We're like, what just happened? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that was like this growth pain, right? I'm yep. like, well, we're not the same company as so-and-so. Why are we charging the same as so-and-so? And then you start looking at like, you have to measure what you do yep. reverse engineer and say, okay, well this is what it actually costs us to do it. And yep. this is what we're trying to deliver. And yeah, you know, it was kind of a scary thing, but then we also started to like, uh, I think it was Oh eight, um, partnered up with focus on energy as a trade ally to become, um, just more like building science approach based business mm-hmm. instead of just, Hey, let's just slap a roof on, make some money and run. Let's, how do we make your home better? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like Connecting more our, with the customer. I think our mindset started to change from how do we survive to how do we improve your life? Yeah. And then that shift was like the, yeah, you know, Oh, you don't need that. And like we started adding more services. So we started, you know, added insulation. I think siding and gutters were just prior to that. And then soffit fascia and like kind of getting to this point of like, everything to do with the exterior envelope of your house we mm-hmm. could deal with mm-hmm. so say if you didn't need a roof you know or if we looked at it like your roof's actually pretty good but you have a ventilation problem let's fix that mm-hmm. and yeah. starting it's yeah, like we can help you shop looks like josh's house on your <laughs> as good as is that my house it's not but <laughs> that dormer looks quite similar <laughs> <It doesn't> look <laughs> like it. looking at george's yeah. website you ask right me now. about my house being on your website <laughs> yeah. Hey, volume one certified. <laughs> look at it. It looks like my house. That does look like your house a lot. Um, God, I had a question I was going to ask. Um, so I actually had Rock and Tate, you guys, um, roof my house, my first house. Oh, wow. It was like 2012 or 2013. Okay. And it was just because it was a two story house, East Hill, Eau Claire, and I didn't want to do it. It was like an 812 pitch. And um, it was small, it wasn't very big. But the funny part about it was, is we had this old biddy of a neighbor. I never met her in my life. She's just some older gal, retired. And um, your crew came in the morning and 
and they were there right right when you, uh, they were supposed to. And I'm looking out the window, and there's a cop behind, like, the crew that you guys had. <laughs> and one of your roofers is out, like, up against a cop car. <laughs> and apparently this lady didn't know what was going on. They, like, parked there because they were waiting for the rest of the crew, and she called the cops. I remember this. this was, <laughs> it was actually my brother-in-law. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> He was getting, like, the home. fifth degree from the cops. We're like, I, dude, I'm just here to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was that's so funny. No, no. no it, it was another brother-in-law. Oh, sorry. That's funny. <laughs> just trying to arrest him. Yeah, but they did a good job. For creeping around the neighborhood. Yeah. Well, at that point, yeah, I mean, at that point, I'm guessing probably it was a team of, like, 8 to 12 maybe, right? So it's like, here comes the party. On, like there's probably a lot of people there. And yeah, she's probably freaking out. It was like a smaller Whoa, neighborhood. Yeah, a bunch they're of... gonna ambush my home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They just parked in the street. They were there for half hour or so, waiting for the rest of the guys. And <laughs> I was like, well, I hope they get this figured out. I'm gonna go to work. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember what I was gonna say. There were um, so we, like we've just had a lot of work done. George has done some work. Uh, well, Rock and Tate has done some work for us. Um, and like, we've had other things, like we just had our HVAC system replaced. Right. And like, um, the difference from a customer perspective, uh, when I've gotten quotes for like other things, other miscellaneous things, let's say I'll I'll give my HVAC as an example. Um, so we had a leak in the, in the master bedroom upstairs (laughs) and (laughs) but dump bump. And <laughs> <Atta boy. laughs> Proud of you. I'll, I'll hit it. And uh, so the, there was like water stains and we were like, what the hell is that from? Where did that come from? So we're like, I'm digging around in the attic and like I find this pool of water and it's coming out of the HVAC system. Find out later that uh, essentially the HVAC system needed to be replaced. Right. And so I start calling quotes. I call George. I'm like, how much roughly should this cost? You know, and get some quotes and i just basically i got like a a text message which was great like the ease of receiving the quote wasn't like some hefty document that i didn't understand with no details but it was just it was just like a quote that showed the equipment and how much it costs and then it was like that was rank one rank two is this rank three is this and i called george and i was like is this right like should i be paying this much money to get my hvac system replaced and he's like well yeah that's about how much it's gonna cost and i'm like what what the fuck am i buying what is this shit like what <laughs> yeah, is this if you know what machine? you're buying right exactly right and so the and that's been the tr- that's been the same with a lot of um a lot of things that i don't want to fix myself i get a quote and it's like it'll be five thousand dollars it's like for what like can you explain what the hell you're doing like can i do some of it you know what 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 are you doing and you can uh, stop leaking in the master bedroom. Yeah, that's, yeah the, that's the we got a leaker. <laughs> Quit leaking. Um, but with George, um, I think the bathroom remodel was the first time. Yeah, I think that was the first time um, we we used Rock and Tate. And George came in, took pictures, like drew everything out on his iPad, and then like started going with what you're talking about. Like this is your problem. These are these are different solutions than what maybe you're thinking of like a remodel of your bathroom. Maybe we move the wall, we blow this wall out, we do this. And I was, then it got my gear, my gears turning, you know, I was like, Oh, I never even thought of doing that, which was, you know, right. It's an up, it's an upsell technique. It's like bartenders use the same thing. Well, you want a whiskey Coke? Well, would you want to, you want Jameson, you know, like a quick upsell. And he was showing me things that I wasn't thinking of. Yeah. But it was a conversation between me and the, the person providing service. And then when I got the quote, um, it was like a detailed five page maybe document that like said week one, this, 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 this. all these things, right, that they were they were going to do demo, sheetrock, structural. And week two was plumbing, electric you know, all of this stuff. And then week three drywall or whatever, you know, maybe all done in a week. But like when I was able to see everything, then I could understand like where my money was going. Mm-hmm. And so I was way more comfortable. It didn't even, the price didn't really even matter. Like as long as it's not astronomical, um, you just look at it and you're like, okay, now I see where my dollars are going and I can pick right. and choose, you know? And then George was right there to say, like, we, we don't have to do this. You could do this, and we'll just come back whenever you're done. So 
that's kind of what we did. We needed to help with the demo part mm-hmm. and moving walls around. And then we kind of finished. I think a lot of people, um, like DIYers, like kind of want to do the finish. You know, if they're nitpicky, I'm pretty nitpicky about like what what my house no. looks like. But, you know, you? so it was just good to like have someone there that was willing to talk to me and not just send me an email and say, "Here's your price. Hit It'll this buy $5, now. $5, Hit this buy now button. <laughs> right. You know, and then we'll be there when we can get there. Right. But, or like filter you in a phone call. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know. You need a new bathroom. Like most master baths, if we did it, it's going to be like thirty or forty grand. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> or you're like, what? what like that? Now, like now you're more stressed you're like yeah that's a big number and i have no idea what we're even talking about yeah, yeah. right yeah no we've had, we've buddied up like so we've we've had so many like i feel like the the changing point for rock and tate of like being out of the so they said what is it 80 percent of businesses are out in five years yep something like that and then the rest like another 15 percent are gone by year 10 mm-hmm. and i think like the biggest thing is, like, you know, I like to refer to, like, what Jesus said or the Bible. Just, like, if you want to be first, you got to become last. Mm-hmm. And get to this point of, like, servant-based leadership that people who are, like, say that work with us, like, I my job is to help them be successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? And then at the same time, like, learning that. Like, you had your roof done because, like, that was going to totally improve your life because you're looking at this steep roof like, oh, my gosh. Like, I, I know I can get up there. I know I can get this started. But then you're, like, you're attaching, like, the pain of how many hours or, you're like, ooh, I don't just – you're thinking it through, right? Yep. So people – we just learned, like, what I've been taught or just, like, I just focus more on, like, growth over, like, the last 20 years. And the more I feel like that I put into me of just, like, okay, how do I just become a better person – it seems like it flows through people are attracted to that because it's like they get like their best interests is in mind. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, to pay a consulting company to help you be a better company was probably like the biggest, hardest decision of like, why should I pay you to help us be a better business? So like, you don't right. know anything about our business. And like, um, like we, we buddied up with this team uh, with Jason Forrest called FPG and it's really cool because they talk about like unleashing you as a human being that there's like thoughts and narratives and all these things that we tell ourselves that hold us back from being our best self mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and one of the things that they because a lot of mostly like sales training but they talk about uh the biggest reason that people spend money is to improve their life yep right yeah mm-hmm. and That's if true. you don't understand how you're going to improve your life you're not going to spend that money right Unless it's like this crazy deal, like, well, I'm, we're willing to take a risk on the, you know, twenty thousand dollar HVAC, just see what happens. Yeah. Right. Like if you're in that spot in your life and you could just, you know, whatever. If they screw it up, I'll just find someone else. Yeah. <laughs> right. But that's a big ticket item. Oh yeah. You need to know, like, okay, is it gonna fix my problem? But then, can I trust it to? Is it gonna maybe lower an energy bill, or will I have better? distributed air conditioning or something like right like tell Happier me why wife. i need to buy this less leakage in the bedroom yeah less leakage yeah. in the bedroom. way less <laughs> right i don't see that happening <laughs> <laughs> love my wife <laughs> love my wife i love that that's good no oh, yeah good experience would you say that you guys are in the like you talked about the building science. It, you're in more of like uh, quality category of uh, construction. People are coming to you to get a perfect job, and there's no worry. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have a lot of repeat customers? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's usually a, a – I don't a, have the stat in front of me, but I think probably 30 40% – Past customers, repeat. Yeah. Or referral. I know over half of our business, for sure, 100% over half of it is is repeat and referral. Yeah, okay. Right, which is, you know, the relationship side of it. Okay. <laughs> You're the cat in the back of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's funny, too, like, we've come up with, you know, like, you ask people things, right? Like, well, why, what's most important to you in this project? And it's crazy, like, 
Yep, everybody wants the good deal. Everybody wants the quality. They want the warranty on the stuff. And at the end of the day, we've got a cat problem. Communication seems to be the number one most important thing. And the ability 100%. to like yeah. people want to feel like they're taken care of. Right. Not so I've told these guys this, like I'm, I'm an attorney and like I've gotten so many clients by just calling people back. They're like, Oh, my old attorney, I didn't hear from him for three months. Like, it's not that hard. you like, right. Just talk to people. It's like, not that hard. <laughs> right. I mean, it's really hard, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, but yeah, no, like literally like, calling somebody back within 12 hours like it's it's it, it seems yeah, so it basic you know but it's like right just do it and oh he cares about me you know like it, i don't know it's it's, and it's I not think rocket some science people feel <laughs> weird to maybe give you that acknowledgement of like thank you so much for answering your phone yeah but when the people do tell you that yeah you realize you know and then it, well, i've also learned like you don't know what you don't know, right? And you can't be afraid to ask. Be like, mm-hmm. you know, say, so, hey, I'm just curious. Like, what's the most important thing to you in this project? Or if someone did some work with us, like, you know, what mattered most to you? You know? Well, and, and like, what was it? And, like, where I go you know? with my job is, like, people are calling me because they have a problem. They don't want to call an attorney. But they're calling me because they have a problem. It's like, okay, what do we need to do to get this fixed? Right. You know? It's... It's not rocket science. Like, just mm-hmm. you treat every client as if they were your mother or whatever. You know, like just right. um, even the guys, even the guys. Yeah, <laughs> even the guys. But yes, ma'am. I, I feel like I'm preaching, but like no, like literally, guys dude, can it's be not mothers. No. rocket science. Like you, yeah, okay, I get that you have a problem. How can we fix it? Like, let's right. find a solution. You yeah. Know? Like, and they're like, oh, I'm so thank you so much for calling me back. I'm like, really? Like, let's. Step one, like let's go. Right? Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm gonna go with you now. You just call me back. So <laughs> <laughs> list your price. Well, and then they're interviewing you, right? You're like, okay, yeah. You call me back now. Do I feel like I matter to them right now? Right. And then if you can like repeat a few things back, and they understand that you understand, they're like, okay, here is the next step, right? Like we talk about all the time. Like you need to give them a clear future. Yep. Right. Like that quote you're talking about, you did not have a clear future. Right. Right. You're like, what do I do with this? What? You know, <laughs> you're like, oh, right. Like you're an overwhelmed buyer. Mm-hmm. Like you need someone to help you understand yeah. what you should do. Yep. And let's say if I was a HVAC guy, like I would have needed to ask a few questions. You're like, here's your options, but this is what you should really probably consider and doing. Why? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And then not just here's, here's a quote. Not, yeah. And here's, and here's the equipment gonna that's going to go in. It's like, what the, what is a heat exchanger? What the hell is this thing? Why do I need right. that? I thought I just need to replace my, my AC unit outside. And I think I told you, I'm like, I mean, they did pretty good with the good, better, best thing, but I'm not yeah. sure. They didn't really. I didn't even know what any, you like, don't know why? Which one to do, right? why do, what's the difference? Why do I, why is the difference between the best yeah. and the worst $10,000? Right. Yeah. But that's, that's definitely what I have appreciated. And even, I think here we had, uh. Well, you had the rainwater issue, but the concrete step in the front, you know, it was like, yep, we'll send a guy out. And the guy was like, all right, this is how much it'll cost. I'll make it look like this. It'll be done this fast. And I'll be here next week. We were like, okay, that's good. He's like, any questions? I was like, can we get the same stamp pattern? He's like, yep, it'll look maybe a little bit darker than what's on the the deck. And and we'll be be done in, in less than a week. I was like. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, I called like five other co- concrete um, specific companies and half of them didn't even call me back. You know, like oh, wow. they didn't, they didn't want the job. You know, they wanted to replace like all of my concrete everywhere. And I was like, no, no, no. I just need a step here. It's in like 15 pieces. Just remove it and <laughs> right. make it again. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, so where's the business at now, George? What, what are you guys, um, what's the next big thing? What are you guys trying to do? You guys expanding? Well, we're actually really excited. Yeah, we, we purchased uh, another building. We were, th- we were talking about building a facility, and in that we're like, you know, let's just see what's out there. And in the mix of that, once we got on the same page with our realtor, like he was on the hunt, and then something popped up, so we, we closed on another location 
I think it was March this year. So we're just in the process now of getting some permits and um, plans finalized so we can change it into what we need. Um, what that space will do is give us enough office space to do a better job than we're already doing. Like right now, we're we're already we're kind of over packed in the facility where we're at, where we have too much happening. That we're seeing that the the sports system we already have, they need some help and things to distribute so we can do a better job mm -hmm. um, of just making sure we provide good experience is the most important thing because yeah. when you can't answer your phone or get back to someone or right. like hey here's the next step mm -hmm. it's it's that's where you know I'll, I'll always say like your success and failure comes in the details well if someone's got a question about the detail that day and no one's available to like say hey a b and c or whatever then that creates anxiety or like you have your idea and i have mine and then yep. you know i don't know if you do any type of contractor law dispute stuff but half the time that a i lot. get asked <laughs> to go look at something i'm looking at two people that just didn't understand each other right, right? Just, we're not you, on the same did page did you talk now to them like yeah. yeah literally that's like and it's painful for me yeah. to be like i just want you guys just to love each other and talk about this right <laughs> but then you know like I, I learned this fancy term called a scotoma which means like once you I've never see, heard of that no scotoma scotoma this was something that fpg taught us that if you're shopping for a car say it's a jeep and you're driving through town the only thing you're gonna see as you drive through town is yeah other oh, jeep. jeep that's very true when i it's bought my scotoma. truck i was like oh there's a yep. there's there's that, the there's one that, there's that yeah. yep <laughs> right so if you got a homeowner who's not real happy because someone didn't answer her phone didn't come back now they're brew 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 and say there's a, a gob of cock or a, a little speck or something right or a fingerprint on something yep now they have that that those spectacles the goggles right mm -hmm. and now everything kind of looks like that <laughs> and yeah it's a weird situation and it's it's got to be hard in your world where you're like oh, yeah. okay well, like we got to have some resolution here yeah but at the same point like then you're like okay like what's the you know is there something that was not done to agreement mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and yeah i mean we we just like you're, you want to acknowledge feelings but you're like let's get the feelings out of this right this is what needs to happen <laughs> yeah i right? can't tell you the number <laughs> of times that i have heard it's the principle of the thing People are fighting over like a foot of land up north, three hours away. But it's a principle of the thing. Like, mm -hmm. Did you talk to your neighbor? No, he's unreasonable. I'm like, well, maybe you should talk to your neighbor. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you need, need to ask. send you need to send a nasty gram. I'm like, well, no, like talk to your freaking neighbor, yeah. and I guarantee they don't even know about the issue, and they're probably okay. Yeah, yeah, like, like, meeting a <laughs> meeting halfway. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you guys heard of uh, Stephen Covey? No. 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 All right. I'm going to look him up. So I was on my way to a home show. We were probably, uh, let's just say we're six years into business, and I was just at this point of I want to learn. I want to get better. And I guess I grabbed it. There was this, this disc from Kinko's, right? I'm like, sure, I'm going to check it out. So he he has a lot of different books. The one oh, that I, I grabbed him. is called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Co yeah, okay. I've read that book. I didn't realize it was him, but yeah. Yeah, so he talks about the maturity process that you go from dependent to independent to interdependence. And, you know, he talks about being proactive, begin with the end in mind. Like he gives examples of like, imagine you're at your own funeral, who's there? You know, be careful what wall you stick your ladder on that you consider success because you might get to the top and realize this is not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. um, putting first things first, that you should be the programmer and not be reactive, right? He talks about being proactive and stuff. Um, and what we were just talking about, like a lot of things in business that I learned is you got to always think win-win with the idea of uh, abundance and the attitude of we, right? That like together we can accomplish more. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. And I found this even with local competitors, like people that are at an intelligence level with respect that I can call them and say, like Chad Asher, I called Chad the other day. I said, hey, man, I run into this gutter. I know you're familiar with this style. What do you think? And we had a conversation about it. And it wasn't like, why are you calling me? And that kind of thing. And it's just it's neat. Like the older that I get that people that have that growth of interdependence. Right. Mm -hmm. That it's just kind of a fascinating thing. And 
Um, I 100% got a call on Wednesday from what a competitor. Yep. He's like, hey, you know, nobody's here in the office. Can I bounce something off you? And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, and he's like, can a, can an LLC have a board of directors? And I was like, yeah, absolutely, you can. He's like, I I thought so, but it like, you know, it's just like it all makes us better if we're talking to each other. You know, yeah, like, right, guys yeah. being dudes. I could have been like, screw, screw you, you know? like yeah, you know, get out of here, Rick. Like, no, right. quit calling me. <laughs> yeah, but, totally. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. It wasn't him, was it? Or you could have told him no. It was definitely you know? Rick. Yeah. <laughs> no, they <laughs> no. can't have board of directors. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, it's actually – so Stefan's fifth habit, and it's just cool because there are principles that he, needs to, he said, like, once you listen to this, test these. And then he's, he said, teach them, right? So uh, I've, like, I've tried to do my best to teach these to all our people. Like, every year we do a meeting, kind of a spring kickoff, and then tie it into, like, why? Why should you care about this, right? Mm-hmm. And it's not just for you to work harder. Like your relationships with your children, your wife, your friends, all this stuff. Like if you if you value these principles, your life will be better, right? Mm-hmm. And what's also interesting is you know people that have had trouble at work, most all the time there's something not right at home, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And then you get down into like that part of it, and you help them figure that out. Yeah. Then works fine. Right. Yeah. And it's just a, you know, and that's what like that, that fifth habit, it says seek first to understand, then be understood. Probably the single most hardest thing that I've tried. I still try to like master it. Yeah. Right. Where it's like, sometimes you almost listen to just speak Mm -hmm. and not listen to like, okay, I'm like really trying to understand you and help them feel understood. Yeah. And then if you have a different idea where people can like value differences, you know, I feel like that was a lot harder when I was younger, but the older I get and more sophisticated, educated adults, like you can have that yeah, yeah. dialogue, but like with clients, right. Mm-hmm. With your wife, your girlfriend, <laughs> you know, whatever, wherever you're at in life and stuff. Um, Do you have a girlfriend? Why'd you look at me and say girlfriend, George? <laughs> I'm married. I love my wife. Is everybody married here? Love my wife. Love. My oh wife. yeah. <laughs> All right. We're married. <laughs> Push that button. <laughs> We're married to the come. game. <laughs> Push that button. Do not come. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, so we um speaking of wives, I need to make a plug. Yeah. Do it. Because plugger. My life <laughs> has become infinitely better since I met Megan. Yeah. For sure. Oh yeah. Shout out Megan. Life at home. Mm-hmm. Infinitely better, and it's just crazy, like how Rock and Tate has has really taken some like huge leaps since then. And I, like I've personally realized, like you know, like FPGs, like you need to realize within yourself that you're enough, that you matter, yeah. that you got to be your own source of joy and passion and motivation, all this stuff. But I tell you what, when you got somebody in your corner that helps you, yeah, believe that for sure, it's just so much more fulfilling to yeah how did you meet megan conquer how did you meet megan um coaching football actually really yeah yeah and you guys just got married um in mexico i was there that was a great time it was awesome it was awesome (laughs) the weather was great that first day the first day we were like all just like kind of you know the the next day was the wedding or maybe it was the day after i think it was the next day there's like rain coming in and like hurricanes coming in. We were like, "Oh shit, this might not work out." <laughs> and then luckily, it it was a, a beautiful day, and, and actually really be. comfortable. Right. <laughs> Surprised with how hot it was, but it was great. Yeah, that was awesome. Thanks for being there, man. Yeah. Thanks for the invite. For sure. I had a great time. I really yeah. did. <laughs> just found out I had ear infections in both ears, and <laughs> my plane ride was just like miserable. And then I got there and thought I was gonna faint. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And did it was it, hot. Did that calm down a little bit? Yeah, over the week. Because I got medication for it, like, literally the day before I hopped on the plane. Okay. And, like, by day three, I was feeling better. Okay. Yeah. So you really brought the party down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was the guy going to bed at nine. Buzzkill. <laughs> Everyone's staying up till two. I'm going to bed at nine. <laughs> uh, I don't feel Sorry, good. Sorry, guys. Got an ear infection. Yeah, go, go. I'm, I'm the, the ear baby. infection guy. <laughs> My ears hurt. <laughs> my ears hurt. Dad, my ears hurt. <laughs> yeah, now your not, hands are going to hurt. Now your back's going to hurt. 
you just pulled landscaping duty. <laughs> My fingers hurt. Oh man. Um. Well, what? Uh, yeah, what else do I have for you? Yeah. What? What would you say is the uh, for new? Um. Not you know not necessarily even in construction, but people starting their their own companies. Um. What's like the the biggest thing you learned and advice to give to people who are, you know, trying? Can I guess? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Treat your people like family. That's a really good one. <laughs> for yeah. sure. Yeah. Not, not the one, though. Not the one. Well, so that's kind of like a step two or three, right? Because if you're right. starting your gig, it's like you've just now separated yourself from everything that used to be comfortable. Yep. Right? And mm-hmm. you have to wear all the hats mm-hmm. until, you know, either you can, like, get something to support, like, hey, I'm going to pay a bunch of these people before money's there, right? But you have to, like, kind of do all of it. Yep. Um, I think I think the, the best one would be, like, why are you doing it, right? Mm-hmm. So if you've if you bumped into someone that, I mean, it, it probably sounds cliche, but I know I've heard this somewhere, but like, if you find someone that has what you want, do what they do. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you're like, like Hey, total like sense, yeah. I really like your life. I like the way it's going on and then become a student of that mm-hmm. and make sure you fully understand, right? Like make sure you look into it because you could be throwing your ladder up against the wrong wall and be like, Holy moly. <laughs> I did not want to do that. Not what I was right? thinking. Yeah. Yep. Um, I mean, for me, it was, I understood a trade and it was something that it's not a fun job. Same reason why you called, right? (laughs) You're like, yeah, you know, I might pay someone to do that. It's a steep pitch. (laughs) Right. Because it's just one of those, like, you know, if you find, if you have something that can improve someone's lives, that's something that's not easy. Mm -hmm. I think some people look at like, oh, I want to do something that's just super fun and enjoyable and this thing and that thing and like it's kind of the opposite i saw something on on instagram the other day where it's like if you want to have all these great things you almost have to embrace just the opposites of those to capture them yeah because it's you know people that don't want to do those things are going to hire you to do it right Mm -hmm. so what what is it like even being a lawyer i'd have to imagine that's uh you know, there's a lot going on there. I mean, yep. just A, just to get through school, to get to that point, there is not a lot of people. Like, I couldn't do it. I made it two semesters of tech college. I'm like, nope, not for <laughs> me. Ya. So I will pay you <laughs> yeah, to take care of legal yeah. matters 100%. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, I don't know. I think you just, you have to have a solution and then realize that you need to, like, be in alignment with what's your message? Like, what's your mission? And have you read this book that I've got pulled up? Start with why. I think I've mentioned this to you. Maybe I think I've heard of it in the bar. Anyway, this book is but the kinda, why before the how is super important. Yeah, the this is um, he talks about kind of this method. Yeah, Simon Sinek is good. Yeah, this is really good. But this yeah. book is just kind of like under right. He, he talks a lot about happiness and like, well, Set your goal first. Like, what is success, and what 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 are you envisioning as happiness? Right. There you go. And that's kind of um, that's your why, right? Right. Like that's that's kind of why and where you want to get right. And then it kind of just drops back into the what do you have to provide? What do you have to do? What do you need to change? And then how do you do that? Right. Like how do you how do you be a more successful engineer or a, or a better roofer or a bi- business owner? And then, you know, that's how you get to the why, you know, the, the happiness, the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but I highly agree. recommend this book. Um, it's on audiobook, So it's an easy, easy few drives to work and you'll get through it. But it was great. This is a nice. awesome eye opener talks about company. He talks a lot about like tech companies that are really relatable for a lot of people like Apple and, and uh things like that and um talked about like why is apple so successful like why do why why do you know 70 percent of phone users own an apple device uh or apple products in general simple right and it's like that vision of their their why is yep. uh 
to make a product that is anyone easy. can pick up yep. and know you how to use it. literally open the box and you turn it on and it says... Just things yep. need to make <laughs> sense, right? Their product just makes sense. And it's easy to to, to digest. And, like, the, their vision is... I don't know what their vision... Their uh, company's, like, statement is, but... Right, they just execute. We could it probably so well. look it up. I probably could. That is true. <laughs> Apple's just so user friendly. Like if you try to do an Android phone, it's like, oh, like what is this? <laughs> I've never used this before. What am I doing? But people get, they die on their hills for that. Oh, yeah. People, Apple gets a lot of hate though. It's like, yeah. uh, I, I don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> their mission statement is to bring the best user experience to customers through innovative hardware, software, and services. I would say that's accurate. Yeah, and their vision to make the best products on earth. And to leave the world a better place than we found it, right? And like that's their why, essentially. Mm-hmm. And then their their what's and their hows or how they're gonna get there. And I think they do a good a good job of that. Does that involve little kids in China or no? No, no. Oh, okay. No, don't talk about that. <laughs> that's the third statement. That's in the fine print. That's LeBron. Don't sue me, Steve Jobs. Don't sue me, bro. Whatever it is. I think it's Tim Cook. Tim it? Tim Apple. <laughs> Tim Apple. No. You know, the other thing that's very interesting, and I, I actually believe it's because if you get that right, you know, you get your mission, mm-hmm. right? Your values. This is what we're doing. This is why, mm-hmm. right? Like, as we talk about every day, like, what's your primary question? So each position or whatever you're doing in our company, like, each person has a primary question. And you need to be answering that in everything you do, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, for a sales pro, it's like, how do I move a sale forward today? It doesn't mean, like, ooh, like, how do I go close something or whatever, Part of that just kind of like maybe, you know, maybe Paul has a thing that he's thinking about, maybe Windows in the next couple of years. How do we move that forward? Well, it's not going to happen today, but he's got a question on A, B, and C. Yep. Help Paul figure out A, B, and C. You know, you're planting those seeds for yep. maybe not today, but for tomorrow. But For sure. Um, do you guys have a mission statement? We do. Is it on here? On um, website? Improving homes and building families. Nice. I guess right at the top there. Somewhere. Somewhere on here. Yeah. I'm on the about page, so it's probably not. Oh, here. Our Our mission, mission, happy families. Yeah. But our, you know, we, because it's crazy. Like ours was really long, like apples, but you're like, how do you (laughs) summarize what you do? Like Mm -hmm. short Mm -hmm. and sweet. While a house is just a space, a home brings your family a sense of warmth, belonging, and comfort. That's true. Mm Mm-hmm. Our Eau Claire contractors are dedicated to taking a whole house approach to meaningful, meaningfully transform your house into a better home and create spaces where you'll make lasting family memories. Warms my heart to hear that, George. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's neat to, like, revisit stuff like this because it's sometimes the days can get long and get busy. Like, oh, I need to go figure out why something's maybe not right. Mm-hmm. But the primary question for those families, right, is how do I make the best decision yep. to keep my family safe today? It really has nothing to do with the house other than, like, please make this problem go away. <laughs> or let's make it better because we're going to sell it in a couple years. Right. Right. And it's – I think that's the other – kind of this the secret sauce of, like, you need to actually value and care about other people. Yeah. Because if you're only thinking about how do you survive and feed your family today – you're gonna get you're gonna fall short of connecting to that person. Yeah. Because until you can solve like improving their life, like whatever where it's at, you're gonna stay here forever, a few years. Like it's crazy how many people have no idea. Yeah. You know, and I, I look back of um you know, my first marriage was not the best. And I went through a lot of different uh marriage programs that were just super education, like helped me grow so much. Yeah. And it's crazy how Half the time, I'm just helping a couple understand each other's wants and needs yeah. with the house. You're like a therapist, basically. Absolutely. Home therapist. Right? Home therapist. Yeah. Right? And just be like, well, isn't it important that, you know, maybe this does this, right? Because I know who I'm talking to. I'm like, but then also, <laughs> isn't it important? Yeah. And all of a sudden, they're like, yes. And they're like high-fiving <laughs> each other and like, yeah, this is you know, great. Isn't it important you just tell her you love her every <laughs> once in a while? <laughs> The, be- right. the bedroom's going to be flooding tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, and George uh. can fix that. <laughs> I'm going to come. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. 
Um, oh, man. Where's that little book? We're at time. Dad George, jokes. Grab, grab that book right there. All right. Flip a page. Thanks, Donna, for the book. Yeah, thanks, Mom. Love my mom. Give us a read out of there. Justice is a dish best served cold. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, what? No. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's the punchline. Who is that, Batman? <laughs> if it were served warm, it would be just water. <laughs> ah, I get it. Just is ice. 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 Yeah. Oh, boo. I don't. <laughs> that is a dad joke. Still love you, Donna, but boo. Oh, man. Oh, she man. didn't make the joke. She just bought the book. I had a nightmare that I drowned in an ocean of orange soda. Oh, no. But thankfully, it was just a Fanta C. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little better. <laughs> that was good. Oh. <laughs> Just a stale dad joke. Should we do a toast? Let's do it. Are we, are we wrapping yeah. this up? Yeah. Okay. We're at time. All right. Gentlemen, here's to the girls of the American shore. I love but one. I love no more. Since, since she's not here to drink her part, I'll drink her drink. Cheers. Cheers.